Amen. You can do better than that. You can come on. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on and let us rejoice. And be glad in it. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So in March of 2011, with Dr. Benjamin Chavis by our side, NNPA at the National Press Club in Washington boldly announced that the organization would be seeking pardons for the Wilmington 10. Believe me, we had no idea how we were going to make this happen. But the black press has been fighting for truth and justice yes, for 186 years. And we knew that we would not stop fighting. And we were committed to do everything within our power to make this day happen. Amen. We gather today in the church because Years ago, it was in this church, this holy sanctuary that provided safety for members of the Wilmington 10. Cash often said when we were in the middle of this, he said the attorneys have the legal part and we have the editorial and the newspaper part. Well, Barbara, you take the moral part. <laughs> So when the National Newspaper Publishers Association, the Wilmington Journal, the sponsors of the Wilmington 10 Partisan Innocent Project, Mary Thatch and Cash Michaels and Attorney John and Ferguson began this journey to secure the pardons for the Wilmington 10, the North Carolina State Conference, the NAACP, the New Hanover County Branch of the NAACP were dedicated to the proposition of justice. Immediately, we committed and dedicated to join this righteous cause. Yes. That's why Al McShirley drafted the resolution and Ms. Carolyn McColeman, who serves as the first vice president of the North Carolina NAACP and member of the national board, my fellow member, petitioned the national board to join us in this cause. Yes. And the board voted unanimously to endorse our efforts here in North Carolina. Yes. This is a, it was a racist miscarriage of justice right. that stained the soul of Wilmington North Carolina and America. All my life, we in the civil rights and faith community have known and felt and believed that the evil twins of racism and abuse of judicial power wrongfully tried and convicted the Wilmington 10. But North Carolina had not been able to bring herself to the realization of this truth. It's often hard for states and nation and power and courts to repent. But there comes a time we must repent. Because there is a finger that still writes on the wall and lets every nation know that they have been weighed in the balance. And this year, God in miraculous ways, Cash, decided to fight the fires of injustice with the fresh, glaring, revealing, and blazing fire of truth. With the light of evidence upon evidence, truth upon truth, petition upon petition, news article upon news article, prayer upon prayer, God orchestrated in Kairos time. Not Kronos time, but Kairos time, his own time. God called a kind of epiphany of sorts gave wisdom and vision to this effort that Mary said didn't even know how they were going to get it done just knew it needed to be done God fixed it so that the fire of truth would burn the conscience of the state the nation and the governor would give her righteous indignation God decided to hold a new trial right out in front 
right out in front of the powers. Yeah. Uh, he decided to do it. God used our feeble efforts to blaze a new fire line. Because sometimes you got to fight fire with fire. So God cut a new fire line through the destructive fires of racism and somehow and he cut through the hate he cut through all the smoke screen for the whole world to see what had been done 40 years ago the same system of government that threw the Wilmington 10 in had to throw their convictions out what a mighty God we serve the same power that prodded them had to promote them. The same power that, that stalked them now has to salute them. The same power that reviled them now has to respect them. Governor Perdue courageously signed the Ten Party and, in the, and the spirit of justice was awakened in the capital of North Carolina and the fresh and reviving fires of truth sent a glow throughout the world. These unjust convictions due to racist manipulation of the court system and extraordinarily and blatantly racially motivated prosecutorial misconduct were nullified. Yes, sir. Those once hounded as criminals now must be listed not just in heaven's record, but even in the archives of the state as heroes. This is a season of epiphany when truth comes suddenly and we have to awaken to what we should have done or done all the time. North Carolina has finally had a revelation and with this revelation comes a continued need for redemption and repentance. Not only will the civil rights and human rights community honor this act, but history itself will record this moment as groundbreaking. On the eve, on the eve of the 150th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation, the light of truth made possible for the governor to proclaim a contemporary emancipation for these Freedom Fridays. And let us now call them by their right name. Let us forever Strike from the record, troublemaker, disturber of the peace. Let us call them by the name their mamas called them, and the ancestors know them. Ben Shaver, Connie Tinder, Marvin Patrick, Wayne Moore, Reginald Epps, Jerry Jacobs, James McCoy, Willie Earl Marine, William Wright, Ann Shepard. Come forth! And let their dedication to the proposition of justice never be forgotten. Their stories now must not only be pardons for North Carolina, but for the nation and the world. Their stories pay homage to all who have hoped and struggled to ensure the promises of one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Their story encourage us right now in our own time to continue to fight against racial and class disparity in the criminal justice system. The stance they took in 71 ought to inspire us to fight for educational equality today and never sound retreat when it comes to our children. This story should inspire a new generation of civil rights lawyers who work like Jonah and Ferguson and Michelle for the movement, for the fulfillment of constitutional law. This story ought to tell every preacher and every cleric it's time to renew your commitment to be a prophet and an instrument of truth and justice. This story must now be taught in every classroom, in every textbook, in every chronicle as a righteous epic and a moment in history. And this story says to all of us, we celebrate today, but we go back to work tomorrow.
and we don't ever give up being determined and dedicated to the proposition of doing what is right knowing that when we have been consecrated by the flame of God's spirit nothing can ever take us from the faith that knows the Lord is my light my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life who shall we be afraid Thank you.